Pickle, let's go to the hotline. And let's bring in the Hall of Famer himself. You see him on High School Scoreboard Live on Friday nights on Valley Sports Southwest. You also hear him on The Horn in Austin, where I'm sure everything's fine and all of the calls have been very normal and relaxed. We go to Craig Way to confirm or deny whether or not the calls on his radio show have been very, very cool and even keeled. If you ignore <laughs> the, the smell of the smoldering buildings being burned, then, then everything else is great. You know, it's, it's fine. No, we're, we're all good down here. We're, we're, we're uh, uh, just uh, traversing through another, another week. Uh, and, and it's a little bit different week. Anytime, as you know, when Texas comes off of a loss, especially one, uh, where they were decisively beaten last Saturday night in Arkansas. So, Tep, yeah, there's uh, there was the the wailing and gnashing of teeth that happened after that, for sure. I have no doubt. Um, let's talk a little bit about high school football from last week, which, you know, we, we came into this uh, last week thinking it's a little bit thinner slate. Maybe, not, uh, maybe it's going to be a, a week that you can fall asleep on. Uh, certainly not the case with a number of big-time results. Um, I'll start in, I guess, a, a team in your backyard, but they came up to DFW and uh, and and took one on the chin. The Lake Travis Cavaliers uh, losing to Rockwall. Um, I'll pose it to you like this: Does this say more positive about Rockwall or more concerning about Lake Travis? I think it's a sliding scale. Mm -hmm. uh, the the first of all, you can't ignore what Rockwall did and how impressive. That effort was. I had a Hank Carter on my show this morning, and he was talking about how impressed. Now, at the same time, he wasn't happy at all with how they played. And he said, fortunately, his his guys came in uh, to practice, or they came in the next morning, and then, of course, hit the practice field uh, on Monday morning at 5.30 in the morning when they do it, and they were ready to go. And he said they all had a bad taste in their mouth. You know, he said uh, it's the, the, the coaches have to – have to kind of figure out the things that they didn't do right. And he said, and a lot of that had to do, obviously, defensively, if you see what Rockwall did with its offense. But he said uh, we kind of put our defense in some bad situations as well. So uh, he said that's the that's the beauty of the non-district world. And you and I have talked about that, Tap. You can get exposed for the things that uh, – need attention and they've got some uh, a need areas that need some attention before they get ready to play again this week to open district down at San Marcos. Uh, I want to give you a couple of, of games that I would qualify as upsets from last week and I want to see how, uh, which one surprised you uh, maybe the most. Um, Bushland's win over Canadian 49-42 in overtime. Uh, Decab's win over Pilot Point 29-28 which uh, literally blindsided us on Valley Sports Southwest because I think that game was scheduled so late. Uh, or I'll throw at you, um, you know, actually a, a guy that we had on our uh, a guy that we had on our show yesterday. Redwater's off to a three and zero start. They beat Edgewood thirty six to fourteen. Which of those three upsets uh, springs to mind as far as a surprise is concerned? Well, given the fact that you almost physically fell out of your chair when you <laughs> saw the result with Canadian Bushland, I'll probably go with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they but they all kind of opened the eyes a little bit. I'm, I'm sure about that. And, and a great start for Redwater uh, to mention that. But, yeah, I think I think it probably took people by surprise because normally we're not used to seeing – well, put it this way. Uh, folks aren't used to seeing uh, a Chris Ketting team build out a huge lead and have it get away like that. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's uh, – I remember us saying on the set, maybe there's more here that meets the eye and more to – to delve into with that. But that that was probably the biggest eye opener. Talk with Craig Way, the Texas High School Football Hall of Famer here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation. Hashtag TF Today. Um, all right, then then there's one other kind of topic I want to, to broach with you is that we are now kind of transitioning out of dis, out of non district and into district play. So it's our kind of our the last embers of uh, dis, non district play are 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 smoldering and and so what I want to do is look at a few of these results across classifications. And 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 I guess the the broader question is how much how much weight do you put in a bigger team losing to a smaller team uh, or, or things like that, I, or, or maybe vice versa in a close game. I'll give you an example with Euless Trinity had like a comeback win and held off Colleyville Heritage, a, a 6A over a 5A Division One, or, or other results where maybe you have a 5A up, uh, upset, quote-unquote, a 6A. Where do you stand as far as whenever a team plays up or punches down or however you want to phrase it, um, 
putting that in the correct context, how where do you fall on these cross classification battles? Well, I think it falls in the two different categories, Tap, because one we can see those uh, as the old coaching phrase goes, interclassification battles. We can see those. Uh, you know, it, it, you can you can mix a 4A against a 5A or a 5A against a, C, a 6A or a, a 3A against a 4A. And, the, and, and I'm less really made aware of the interdivisional matchups within a specific classification. For example, this week, which I think is a really good matchup, LBJ from Austin's going up to Liberty Hill on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's that that goes to interclassification as opposed to just an interdivisional battle and and we've seen interdivisional battles uh happen within the same classification before but i think it depends on the program I, it, it, it it's nothing to us i know it's nothing to you to see uh carthage as a 4a d2 team beat up on a 4a d1 team it it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter i am curious to see how you know cisco does against jim ned uh this week i think that's a that's one of the best matchups that I'm looking forward to seeing that's an awful lot of fun but you know until you I think it depends on the matchup and on the team uh, before we say wow you know be really impressed by that because some teams the, the enrollments may be in the ballpark of one another then it comes down to uh, how much tradition how many kids do you have in the program before Whereas the overall student body ADM or ADI, the mm-hmm. AD, the average daily uh, attendance numbers that are turned into the UIL might be a little bit deceptive depending on whether your program has tradition and has kids in the program and, and that sort of thing. So that's where that's where I think it's a little bit different than what we might see otherwise. Well, I'll give you a perfect example, and it's right in your backyard. Let's talk Cedar Park. Okay, Cedar Park's one and two. Of course, it played in the title game last year, and that's not to say we didn't have questions about Cedar Park going into the year, losing Ryder Hernandez, etc. They had a lot to reload there uh, at Cedar Park and a new coaching staff, etc., etc. They have two losses, but the losses are to Vandegrift and to Round Rock. Not only 6A teams, but I think one could argue pretty darn good 6A teams. So with that particular example with Cedar Park, where do you fall on the scale of being worried about the Timberwolves being one and two? Well, that that goes to your phrasing again, a perfect example, because Cedar Park as a, a high enrollment 5A D1 program that has a lot of kids in the program, a, a couple of state championships under their belt, a, a long winning tradition. They've taken a couple body blows like this from area 6A program. The Vandegrift thing's a big rivalry. They used to be they used to be pretty good rivals, and of course Vandegrift continue to roll with its enrollment and get up to 6A. So there's some rivalry involved with that. And then uh, Round Rock has some huge numbers, as we know. And of course they had to rally. By the way, Tap, and this would be a question for you. We had somebody texting this morning asking how Round Rock is in the poll and Vandegrift isn't in the poll and 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 you know they always mm-hmm. throw out the old score comparison you know how Vandegrift put it all over Cedar Park and Round Rock needed a late touchdown to beat Cedar Park and said well first of all it's week three is different from week one mm-hmm. but Vandegrift has been impressive and I said but I said everybody has known going into this year that probably the two best teams in 26-6A or 25-6A in no particular order are Round Rock and Vandegrift. And I said, and by the way, uh, no matter what happens when they play at the end of the regular season, it, assuming they're both in the playoffs, and it's a pretty safe assumption, they're going to go their separate ways. Yeah. Round Rock's going to be D1 and Bandy's going to be uh, D2. So uh, so we get to enjoy it for what it is in a possible district championship. Those are all those kind of great discussions that are fun to have. I know you like to dive into them. Sure, and I can actually answer that person's question. I would say that the reason the Vandegrift is ranked and Round Rock is not is because, uh, yes, they have a, a mutual opponent in, in Cedar Park. They both get a win over those. I would say that, plain and simple, Vandegrift has played a tougher schedule overall. Their other two wins are over Colleen Ellison and San Angelo Central, including on the road, which, you know, that's a long, annoying road trip to go to to go to San Angelo. Whereas Round Rock, uh, their other wins are to Hewitt, Hewitt Midway, who is a good name brand, but is also 0-3 this year, uh, and Belton. You know what I mean? So I would say that, plain and simple, the, the resume for, for Vandegrift is a little stronger. Round Rock's certainly on our radar, especially after what they did last week. And if Round Rock goes and they beat Cedar Ridge, which I think that they will this week, then maybe they can crawl into that ranking. Anyway, one last question for Craig White, the Texas High School Football Hall of Famer, who joins us every 
Tuesday here on Texas Football Today. I'm going to do your favorite game, Craig, and I know you're going to get me back on Thursday, so I might as well just get the first blow in. I'm going to give you three games. You can teleport to one of them. And I'm going to give you three games, I believe, across different classifications. I think that's right. I think, the, and the, in fact, these are all cross classification matchups. How about that? You can either okay. go to Highlander Stadium and watch the aforementioned Rockwall Yellow Jackets take on Highland Park, uh, where they've only lost twice since 1998, or you can go to Tuscola and watch Jim Ned take on Cisco in a matchup of unbeatens, or. You can go to the Golden Triangle, and you can go watch Newton and West Orange Stark. Which of those three are you going to teleport to? Wow. Those are all... All really juice. good. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. Those are really, really good. And that's good. not even to mention, by the way, a task seat in Geyer, which is going on this weekend, too. True. True. Poth and Shiner mm-hmm. perhaps deserves a, some mention uh, as well. Um, you know, I, I, I would probably... Uh, I love the triangle. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a, it's a great matchup. I would probably lean a little bit toward Jim Ned Cisco because uh, uh, Cisco, as we know, is a punishing two AD one. But you have a defending state champion three AD one. So how does Cisco measure up? And that, and I brought that example up earlier. I think that's a great one there. But gosh, how can you say no also to Newton West Orange Stark? Oh. That's an awful lot of fun. Yeah, that Newton West Orange Stark game is going to be interesting because I feel like we'll learn a lot about both those teams. He is Craig White. He's a Texas High School Football Hall of Famer. You can hear him on the horn in Austin every weekday, and you can see him on Valley Sports Southwest on High School Scoreboard Live, 11 p.m. Uh, Central Time uh, on Valley Sports Southwest alongside Rick Renner and myself. Craig, appreciate your time, and I imagine I'll be talking to you soon. Looking forward to it. Thanks. There he goes. Craig White, Texas High School Hall of Famer, joins us here on Texas Football Today every Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.